While visiting Glasgow, I noticed there's lots of variations on the way fake neon signs have been implemented by using the linear LED tape. And this is one of the nicest ones, but um, there are other ones as well that are actually quite ugly. And the only place this one really falls down is the M here, where they've actually, instead of carrying it right round that curve, they've split it for some reason. Maybe it was just too tight and they had manufacturing issues with it. But uh, let's take a closer look at this one and then we'll take a look at the other ones too. So now we have some light. You can see this is one of the versions that is based on the vac form plastic. And it's very clever because it lets them put a very precise channel in to lay this in and it also lets them punch holes through it to actually wire these up. And there's a lot of wiring this one because each section of the tape, it starts off uh, here and that ends up there, but it also splices and comes out to here and then it loops and it just forms a continuous bus of sections around the whole sign until it gets to the end. And I'm guessing that this LED tape probably has the resistor per LED approach because the intensity seems very linear from one end to the other. It doesn't fade off. Some of the other ones do that. So let's take a look at another variation. Actually, you know what? Before we do that, let's take a look at how this stuff works. And some of you, this will be deja vu, but it's worth recovering because others may not have actually seen this. So let's bring in a notepad. And let's lock off the exposure so it doesn't flicker up and down. The standard LED variant on Neon has a construction like this. It has moulded plastic channel, which is a brilliant white, and the point of that is that it reflects the intensity uh, inside, it reflects the light inside. And there's the channel where the light comes out, that's this diffused material, which comes down inside that, it's all moulded together. And then, so you don't get that dottiness of LED tape, there's a channel inside and there's a strip with the LEDs in this pointing sideways and they fire out sideways into the lights of reflector area and so it diffuses through this and the only light you get out through the front has been diffused and it means it's less efficient than just bare strip with those sharp pixels on it but you get this lovely linear glow as you can see here it's fairly even. Another variation which is interesting, well let me show you them actually. I thought this was very clever. This was uh, on sale in Poundland. So let's uh, turn this on. It's not going to be too bright. So one moment, I'm just going to adjust the lighting. That's a bit better, though. I have to say the Dream one, it's, it's a mains powered one with a low voltage power supply. This one is running on batteries and I have to say the LEDs are not perfectly matched for the forward voltage. So you're getting some slight variation. But in this case, uh, this one is uh, the same sort of idea is the drawing here, but it's different and I'll show you that right now. I'll bring the light back. Now we have the light back. It's a very neat design. This one has a shaped plastic channel. It's molded in hard plastic and it looks like this. So that hard backing channel which forms the entire outline of the sign. But then it's got another rigid plastic channel which it domes over the front. But inside that comes down on a sort of strip like that and that side just comes down just enough to go into the channel and the LED's tape is actually just stuck onto the side of that with the LED's pointing sideways so it gives the same effect but it means that there's no complex uh, shaping of the rope and it, I suppose it makes it cheaper that they can just basically in this one they can just run the LED tape around the shape and then physically clip the plastic in. So it's a very uh, neat way of making a mass produced sign. It's very clever. And the other approach to that, I'll just grab the flamingo. Is this going to be bright, I wonder? Is this going to look bright? Is it going to be bright enough? Let's see. It's okay. You're just going to have to imagine this being a lot brighter. But this is a, a really common early approach to making these signs. It's worth mentioning that you may see there's a slight intensity tail off along the length that comes back it's slightly dimmer at that side they could have fixed that they fed the material from one side and it means there's a slight voltage drop along the uh, led rope light and if they'd actually fed it with a positive from one side and the negative from the other it would have actually made that more even but in this case they've got a plastic channel molded plastic channel shaped to the actual signage but they've used conventional 
LED neon simulation. Just, uh, I'm trying to pick it out here. They've used, there's the white background that reflects, there's the translucent front, and they've just basically got a standard piece of the rope and they've pressed it into the frame. This one's quite clever because to make it easier to back, flat pack, it unplugs like this and it's got a couple of springs in the base. It runs on uh, AA batteries, three of them, but it also has a USB port. Hopefully there's uh, some protection to stop it charging the batteries, but I will take this one apart later on and we'll find out, but it's quite neat that it just plugs together like this, and there you have that sort of pseudo neon sign. So the next exhibit is terrible. It's a variation. I'm just going to turn the flamingo back off here. It's kind of a way they've tried to create the original neon look where the tubes would be shaped and cross each other, but with glass and a proper skilled neon bender, you are shaping the glass quite in a complex. You can have very complex of shapes and dips and humps over the glass behind it. And uh, in this case, they've done that with plastic. So they've got a plastic channel to hold this flexible tape. But where it comes up and crosses over itself, they've got little bridges to guide it across. And in their attempt to try and do it all as one linear line, it kind of, the A looks very weird. It really doesn't look neon-like at all. So let me just power this up. And again, it's showing that intensity thing that it starts off very bright here and there's a trail away. It just gets a wee bit dimmer at this side of the rope. I mean, it works fine, but it's just, um, I suppose it makes it easier for them to manufacture that way. It's certainly less work than this one. But I would say my favourite so far for the sharpness of the detail, and it's just the fact that you can do it, you can cut this into little pieces. The I've looked at 240 volt tape, you also get 120 volt tape, and you get 12 and 24 volt tape. The, oh, and 5 volt, um, or the 5 volt, uh, and I suppose ultimately the ones without resistors are op designed to operate around about 3 volts, so lots of different voltages. But they have limitations on where, how often you can cut them. In the case of this one, because it's low voltage, you can cut it per LED, which is very good. Other ones, like the 12 volt, where they have uh, three LEDs and a resistor, and then another a cut point, and then three LEDs and resistor, you can cut it roughly every inch. Although you'd get different versions of the rope that let you cut it every half meter or cut it every 25 millimeters. I prefer the ones that you can cut it the, into shorter sections. But the downside of that is it, it makes it much harder for them to manufacture because these often use little bus bars inside, although they've not actually used that here because it's short sections. But they often use little bus bar wires inside. Oh, I should have actually included that in the picture. That would make sense. I shall include that in the picture. Where's the pen? The bus bar wires are typically like that, and they occasionally loop down and onto that circuit board. And the idea of that is that when you terminate it, you've got little metal spikes that go into the end of those in a connector. And uh, they make the connection, but you can also loop out the other end as well. And it just makes it very easy to terminate. In this case, they've done it differently. They appear to have soldered directly onto the end of the rope. And it just means it's that little bit... messier they have. They've soldered directly onto the LED tape here, probably just because it was easier to solder onto that point than try and make a connection with the bus bars, which are probably there anyway. Let's take the end off and take a look. Yes, you can see the, sort of the bus bar strands there. I'm just going to pull them away from the circuit board material. So this does definitely have those little bus bar wires in it. But maybe they've done it this way because they... It was not able to be cut at regular lengths, or maybe it was just easier to solder onto the circuit board, because sometimes those little bus bar wires are, are aluminium in some of the sort of things. It doesn't feel like it here. It feels more rigid. But um, this is one of the nicest ones. It means it's a fairly intensive job to actually cut all these sections and solder them together, but it just results in a very flat sign, which has advantages for the packaging, and it means you get super sharp outlines where that can butt right hard against the side here without having to duck under it. 
as Nian would uh, probably have had to done, had to have done. But that's uh, the current state of LED neon. It's interesting the different approaches that have been taken, and uh, it's quite smart, particularly the vac form one, where it, the channel is they can just make these frames very easily. It's pretty smart. I like these. 